Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Mole Trap here, coming at you with another StarCraft commentary. And we got another HD recording of a replay. And this is from 2010. And this is, of course, EJ Dong down here in the bottom left hand corner. He's going to be the purple Zerg, and he's going to be playing versus Sky. Uh, in the top right hand corner who went by a couple different names sky is a cow clan so he's sky a cow i think he went by like onesie twosie threesie sometimes as well and we can see them chatting as well this is from a practice uh games replay pack and so that's why they're just kind of being cordial and talking about stuff they may be in fact even talking about the previous game that they played if they were playing practice games together um so this is uh, of course you know one of the greatest zergs to ever live down here in the bottom left. Jadong needs very little introduction, if at all. And, uh, you know, if you happen to be, this is this your first ever StarCraft game you've ever watched and you don't know anything about the pro scene, Jadong is a legend. He's very, very good at the game. Um, absolute genius at StarCraft. And especially, this is 2010, when he was really at his peak as well, I would say. Um, maybe 2009 you could call his peak, actually. But, you know, he's, he's in really good shape. This is before... Things get too wonky with with uh, switching to StarCraft 2 and everything like that, where a lot of the StarCraft 1 players got distracted by StarCraft 2. Anyway, we got Sky up here in the top right as well, by the way. Uh, a Protoss player who was uh, not exactly a B-teamer, but he was just not really a top-level player for Oz. But, um, you know, he was a player that he played in the Pro League sometimes and never really... You know, did a lot. He he lost a lot of games, honestly, in the pro league. He won a few though, uh, against decent players. So he's not to be discounted. But 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 but, um, it's my understanding from what the the thread where I got this replay pack that these are supposed to be pretty good games. And then he actually gives Jadong a good run for his money. And I don't know if he, that means he wins or not. So I have actually no idea what is going to happen here. But this is supposed to be a pretty good game. So I wanted to. Just take the recommendation of the replay uploader and uh, go ahead and try it out. So we got Jadong opening three hatcheries, by the way, before pool. Whoa, crazy. Um, and we're interestingly enough, we're seeing that, um, you know, Sky has kind of gone in. I mean, he's this map is a big map. This is benzene, by the way. This is a big map, and so it's really hard to get a rush off on this map anyway, unless you're doing some sort of proxy. So it's not super surprising. Um, but I don't think, I don't know if Jadong, I didn't check to see, but I don't know if Jadong actually scouted this fast Nexus. It was Nexus first, or if he just kind of assumed it was Nexus first, or made a bet that it would be Nexus first, or made a bet that even if it was Gateway first, um, I mean, he's probably betting against Gateway first, because the thing is, is like, then you can get zealots across the map and, and there'll be a, well, actually, yeah, I don't know. Actually, I don't know the timings on this map, but, um, it, it would still probably be okay because it's such a long distance for the zealots to, cause this, it's got a windy route. You have to go up, you know, across these ramps, you have to go across the map and then kind of around the side and down. And so it's just, it's not like that huge of a map, but it adds extra distance because of the curves and what have you. So anyway. Point being, I'm just rambling now about how it was a kind of a safe move for Jadon to get three hatcheries first. But, a Sky got Nexus first, so they're both just powering straight into Econ builds and not really uh, worried about a rush of any kind on this map. Um, so, not a huge surprise there. Now, Sky, by the way, uh, did scout Jadon's build when he built that gateway. Um, so, you know, if he'd scouted an uh, earlier spawning pool, he probably would have built the forge first, having built the nexus already. You cannot just defend uh, early zerglings when you've gone nexus first with just the gateway. It doesn't work. So he's, that's why he would put, put down the gateway next. Um, just to make sure he gets his tech up faster in, in addition to the cannons, right? Because the thing is, is you get that forge first so that you can protect your, your base while you get some tech going. A lot of zerglings popping out here for Jadong, by the way. And he's just going back into drone production after that as well. Speed is coming up on complete in addition to that. The probe gets picked off, and that's a crucial point, actually, because the lair has just finished recently, and so we're going to see what kind of tech uh, Jadong is going to go for, and he does put down a spire in his main base. So killing off that probe is actually huge because it means that probe is not in a position to actually scout that spire. Of course, speed was going to finish, 
Uh, he could have waited for speed to finish, tried to box out the probe and put the spire down in the natural or something like that. But that's a little bit more risky. Jadon running across the map with a significant count of Zerglings. I believe that uh, Sky is going to be covered on this, though, so it's not going to be a, a huge threat. But what I was saying before, just to finish that thought, is, um, you know, Sky, w when you build the forge, you build the cannons, you're protecting yourself so you can get your tech up without too much of a problem. And um, by scouting that he didn't need to do that yet, he can still get his tech going faster, because that's the whole point in the first place, is getting your tech going. And uh, we do have the first Corsair out harassing some overlords over here. It's going to be able to pick off one of those. Uh, actually, it's going to supply block Jadong while he's picking off this neutral building, the power generator on the side. He's actually going to be able to get uh, through to the second one as well. He's going to try and get into the back door. And is uh, Sky going to be able to deal with this? I don't think he is, actually. There's multiple um, power generators here. He's going to have to eat through all of them. There's a lot of hit points that he has to kill off. But he's going to do uh, a job of it, and eventually he will get through those. I actually don't know exactly how many there are. But the Templar Archives is up as well in the background, so we're going to see DTs likely popping out very soon. Um, well, let's see, actually. Uh, I was assuming he'd go for a DT right away, and we'll find out in a moment if that's what's going to be the case. He's actually also going for the Zealot Legs, but what is he using this Templar Archives for is the question. By the way, Corsair just kind of scouting around, checking out what's going on in Jadong's base. I'm really focused on this because I'm waiting to see what happens when he finally kills off the last power generator. Um, but uh, in the meantime, Cal is moving across... Not Cal, Sky. Sky Cal, sorry. Got myself confused there a little bit. Moving across the map with some Zealots uh, in addition. Okay, there are actually way... So many power generators over here. And he finally sees it with the Corsair, so he kind of knows this is going on. Um, <laughs> but it is taking Jadong a while to get through, so maybe that's why it wasn't much of a concern for Sky because he's like, okay, well, there's so many power generators there. I thought there was just like, well, honestly, I, I thought there was only one. I haven't really seen this map. It's been, it's been a long time since I've seen a game on this map or really paid attention to it. So hold that thought. We got Zealots coming in here into the third base. It's a really nice, uh, defense setup here. Really good SimCity with the Hydro Stem blocking it. So there's only one. And that second, uh, Sunken Colony is crucial, by the way. Only the one Sunken Colony, those Zealots probably could have taken it out and started going to work on the Zerglings, maybe gotten some drones. Overlords are going to be uh, killed off as well here. And now, here we go. The old Ser DT coming in here. Um, kill off the Overlords with the Corsair. Come in with the Dark Thunflar as well. And uh, it looks like the Sunkins are going to be able to deal with the Zealots. But in the meantime, the um, Dark Templar is going to get some free kills here. And he's actually going to try and kill off the Sunken Colony. There's a Scourge coming in for the bottom. He needs to clear this out. There the Overlord pops up. Is he going to be able to kill off the DT before the Overlord dies? He does get one, but there's a second Dark Templar here as well. The Corsair is going to be able to kill off this Overlord, and uh, another one pops out. So he's continuing to pop out Overlords at this top left base in order to try and kill off the... Uh, and he doesn't quite get the DT there. The DT survives. And so he's just forced to fight now with uh, just Zerglings at this point as the DT does polish off the Sunken Colony. The DT finally does go down now. Um, and the Zealot as well. So he's able to defend that pretty pretty decently. But another Dark Templar, uh, two more actually coming into the Natural Expansion. He's much more readily defended over here in the Natural Expansion. I was kind of keeping an eye down there. And the second wave is going down here, but he's kind of kind of ready for it at this point. And I, I was kind of focused on these Zealots up here. I don't see what happened to the Corsairs, but it looks like the Corsairs were killed off by Scourge at some point because he, I noticed he was down to three and that's why the Corsairs landed, uh, sorry, the Scourge landed and killed one of the Corsairs. Um, and so they were very vulnerable with only two, um, oh, are these dare tanks going to get any more, uh, damage done? Nope. No zealots to back them up and, uh, no corsairs to kill off this overlord. So this time the Dark Templar is just going to die to the sunken colonies. He does get several drone kills, but not quite worth it, I don't think. Um, Psystorm is almost completed, Bo, by the way. The while he's been making Dark Templars, he's already been switching over and transitioning into the tech necessary for the High Templar. And I didn't actually realize that he had broken this over here on the side and he was had uh, put lurkers on the side. Um, <laughs> in this case, two things going at once. And, oh, this... Uh, Archon needs to not be standing in lurker fire while he's battling the Zerglings. Yeah, this Zealot's got the right idea. He's like, I'm going to stand back here. I'm going to fight these Zerglings once they get past. But it's a little bit of danger here for Sky now that um, these units are in his main base, or well, almost in his main base. They're kind of up on this ridge here. And in the very least, this is a good spot he can kind of control and uh, attack these probes as well. So that's exactly what he's gonna do. He's gonna burrow up here. He's gonna try and get um, some probe kills. That's why we got all these probes on the extractor. 
sorry, the assimilator because that gives them an opportunity to um, just stay out of range of the lurkers on the high ground, basically. And uh, Observer's gonna pop out momentarily and that's gonna be able to allow this unit to come in here and take care of these. He's gonna be fine. And even over here on the side, actually this forge is gonna go down, I think before it's able to complete, uh, is this, this is probably plus two, right? Um, yeah, oh, he's actually gonna save the forge. He saves the forge, well done by uh, Sky. Very nicely done. And uh, you know, he did a lot of damage with uh, a significant amount of damage and also a lot of distraction with those Zealots and Dark Templars earlier. So he's actually in pretty good shape. He's got plus one, plus one. Oh, he's gonna try and finish off the Forge. 10 hit points for it goes down. Very nice move by Jadong, sensing a vulnerability there and saying, I'm just gonna sacrifice half a dozen or a dozen Zerglings, run in there, get that Forge, kill it off. And now the Mutalisks are out as well though. Not sure if Sky is expecting this. Uh, nine Mutas heading across the map. They actually dodge around the Zealots. Not going to try and go for a kill there. Going to go straight for the main base, which is vulnerable. There's only two um, uh, cannons there. I'm sorry, a third is morphing in right now. But the natural is even more vulnerable. There's um, no cannons directly protecting the probes there. And while this Mutalisk Harass is going on, Sky is running across the map with a significant ground army with plus one weapons, not plus two. And it looks like he's going to be going over towards the third base here momentarily. But again, no Corsairs. So he's going to have a hard time dealing with these Mutalisks. The probes are, you know, gathered around, crouched around the campfire that is the cannons to try and stay warm in the cold winter of being harassed by Mutalisks. Um, Mutalisks going trying to stop the third base. The Archons are going to be able to do that, deal with that pretty well. And so will these uh, Lurkers be able to easily, easily deal with these Zealots. I think he had an Observer and I think it got picked off. Uh, at some point by uh, probably a scourge that was hanging around next to an overlord but even with an observer this would be an extremely difficult situation to deal with the sunken colonies multiple layers of um lurkers as well just these zealots are not going to be able to deal with that situation very well even with one archon to support um just not going to be able to deal with it now what i was trying to say earlier though is that jadong has been so distracted though that he hasn't been able to get up a fourth base anywhere on the map he's just been on three bases while Sky has been on two, which is obviously less, but it's, you know, kind of similar uh, equivalent economy. And Sky's been able to get up this third base. Can he defend it, though, with just the one Archon? He's got a couple Zealots to deal with the Zerglings. He's got the Archon to deal with the Mutalists. He's got only a few Corsairs. This is actually a little bit dangerous. He could actually lose those Corsairs, depending on if Jadong wants to fight or not. But no, the, the, the Mutalists are all very low on hit points because of the uh, encounters with the Archon and so they're gonna back off getting even lower on hit points with the splash damage of the Corsairs as well. So at this point uh, Sky is continuing to make Corsairs if he can get up to that like five or six cor Corsair count number He'll be able to um, you know get back control of the air. This is a really interesting thing Usually once the Zerg has Mutalisks, it's kind of like they've seeded and the, and the Protoss doesn't have any Corsairs they've seeded control of the air and and the the Protoss kind of has to, to deal with things from the ground with Archons and what have you, but it looks like he's trying to take back control of the air. Jadong, though, moving across the map with a massive army. He's got the Mutalists on the side as well, but a large group of Lurkers that all those Lurkers, I think, that were up at the top left are now going in for an attack instead. He knows that if he can shut down this third base and take his own fourth at the same time, he's going to be in great shape and will be able to take the long game. So he's going in here trying to threaten this third base, which he knows is vulnerable. He knows that there's a pretty low unit count. He's spacing out his lurkers relatively well. The one's going to get stormed. Where are the observers? It looks like he doesn't have any observers in with his army, so he's forced to just use Psy Storms. He's got cannons morphing in, though, and as those cannons morph in, he is going to be able to get vision of some of the closer lurkers he's gonna fall back though and uh this, all the lurkers are currently out of vision range out of detection range i should say and it looked like an observer came in there and immediately got scourge killed no i'm sorry the scourge dying was actually this archon just killing it never mind there was no observer but either way there's no observer here right now there's the observer coming in right now a little bit too late the scourge were in the perfect position to pop that observer and this is kind of oh he's got enough back here to deal with it though now, the probes are not really mining here, but this is a huge, crucial fight right now. If Sky can win this fight and retain control of this position, he'll be in great shape. But it looks like the Nexus is actually going to go down. He might maintain control of this position, but losing the Nexus means that it's not necessarily even worth it. But now he's kind of contained on two different sides. He, this little area is kind of contained. It. Oh, there's... Oh! Oh, he got... He got consumed, and he consumed the Zergling, but the Dark Templar was there and picked off. Oh, he didn't have... 
It, wow, that was that was kind of crazy. The Dark Templar was just threading like several needles in between the spines of the lurkers, and now the Corsairs come in to try and clear things out so these Dark Templars can deal with the main threat. The Dark Templar doesn't thread any needles that time, gets picked off before the Corsairs do their job. Now the Scourge come in and the Corsairs are targeting the Overlord, so the Scourge get in there and demolish the Corsair count. He was up to the perfect number of six or seven Corsairs, enough to pick off almost infinite Scourge, and then he lost them because they were targeting the wrong position, and now the Mutalists come back in with additional Scourge to polish them off, and Jadong has re-rested control of the air back into his grip, and now the Mutalists can reign supreme in the air. Now he can protect, uh, uh, he can just basically have air support against all of his ground units. Um, he's actually still distance mining with those last few probes at that four, third base. In the meantime, Jadong has gotten up this fourth base, by the way, and we can see him mounting up for a big drop. This is the finishing blow, uh, basically, getting macro hatches in his fourth base as well, getting a fifth base. And that was, you know, like I said, if he maintains control of this spot, he can then go across the map and threaten the brand new undefended fourth base of Jadong, but instead it went the other direction. Instead, Sky loses this base. Oh, he has actually managed to sneak some Dark Templars and the Overlords are not here. The DTs are picking off all of these, uh, picking off several of the Lurkers actually. He's gonna uh, relieve the containment on himself and he has managed to sneak in this third base, this new third base in the bottom right actually. So Sky is not quite out of it yet. I do feel like Jadong has a significant advantage because he accomplished what he needed to. He shut down this third base. He got his fourth up. He got his macro going, and here's that drop, ladies and gentlemen, coming in with the Mutalisks as well, and Defilers to put down Dark Swarms all over the Nexus. He's going to try and target down the Nexus, I believe, try and pick it off, although maybe some tech buildings might be a better choice. So some of the Zerglings are attacking some tech buildings. They're kind of willy-nilly all around the map, and that is going to do it. Sky has no main major response for that. I didn't actually see what his supply count was. I'm just going to skip back for a moment here just to see what his supply was. Uh, at the end of that game, but he just basically didn't have the forces to deal with it um, So his actually supply was Significant he wasn't that far behind in supply count, but um, he just didn't have any way of dealing with the drop And he had no way of dealing with the mutalisks either if he went in with uh, You know whatever zealots and high templar he had to deal with the drop and it looks like he knows it's coming This zealot has spotted it. So he's actually moving his army into position as we speak in preparation for this drop He knows it's coming and he's gonna come in here and try and defend it, but he just doesn't have much here. And uh, what does he have? I mean, does he have stuff other places on the map that we're missing? Like, where is all this 100 supply? Is it all probes? He's got six, well, he does have, he has 60 probes. Yeah, so he has 60 probes, which means he only has 42 army. Um, and uh, it's all right here. There's a Dark Templar, an Archon, a handful of Zealots, a few High Templar. So the High Templar are kind of his main uh, the potential for for cleaning this up, but look they get picked off one gets picked off he, gets, he does get a storm off, but basically the storm is forced and he just loses the high Templar on the side without even casting a storm That was his one way of essentially get back in, getting back into it was to use those storms to good advantage if he was able to you know Really get some solid damage on the Mutalisks and come in with the Archon to clean up uh, Or or if he was able to storm most of the Zerglings or something like that if he'd use those die storms a little bit better it would have been pretty good, but uh, unfortunately, I don't even know if those High Templar had energy. Um, that might have been part of an issue as well, but Jadon cleans it up very well and uh, and deals with the situation and uh, just brilliant play. I mean, you know, like I said, the uh, um, I was uh, led to understand that, and, and they played a few games on this map, so um, um, I might do another one of those at some point. Uh, but I am still kind of on the road. Um, well, not still. I'm back on the road for a shorter trip, and so that's why I haven't been getting too many games up lately, but I wanted to get one online pretty soon. Hopefully, I'll be able to get another one up before too long. But uh, side note, by the way, um, uh, one of the games that I uploaded, the third game uh, between Zero and Flash, uh, it was like it got uploaded and published, but then it got set to private, and I didn't realize that it happened. So um, that third game, if you ever clicked on it and you wanted to watch that third game between Zero and Flash, uh, which was very good, by the way, um, and you didn't get a chance to because it said this is set to private, it's now public, so, you know, go back and give it another try. Um, and uh, I'll put a link to that in the video description of this video if, if you missed that one. Um, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed it. Always fun to watch Jadong uh, show off his absolute perfection of his craft and... Uh, you know, Sky put up a good fight. There was some points where I actually, you know, like I said, he's kind of a, a pro league, pro league, not very good player. 
at, at the time of this uh, this replay. Don't know what he's up to these days, actually. Um, but um, you know, anyone can anyone can beat Jadong. You know, if you look at uh, the records in practice games, like even B teamers beat Jadong sometimes. So it's like that's one of the cool things about StarCraft is like, yeah, uh, the best player is going to be able to win more often, but it's never a certainty. So you always have to um, play your best, even if you're the best. And um, you know, so Sky put up a really good fight and actually came close to winning at a couple points there, I think. Came close. Well, let's, let's say take, came close to taking an advantage that he could have potentially won off of. So, um, anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks very much for watching. GG. Take care.